Hello. Today we're going to look at a couple different ways um, you can model division with a remainder. And we're going to do it with my dog, Scoop. So Scoop's got friends and she likes to hang out with them and have parties. So Scoop was having a puppy party with her buddies, Sully and Lucy. Um, they have 26 bones to munch on for their party. So we want to know how many bones does each dog get. And we always want to be fair to make sure each dog gets the same amount of bones. So we're going to look at three different strategies to figure out how many bones each dog can get. So really the key is to understand this is a division sentence. I have 26 bones and I want to divide them equally among three dogs. So the first model I can use to show this is an array. And each one of my dogs is going to be a row. So I'm going to have a row for Scoop. I'm going to make a little line over here. A row for Lucy and a row for Sully. I'm going to use SU for Sully. And then I'm going to keep dishing out my bones. So I've given up three bones so far. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have that 27th bone to be able to give Sully. So this is what a remainder is. What we've done is made an array to show how many bones each dog can get. So when I go back through and count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it looks like each dog gets eight bones. But since there's a remainder, there's some extra bones left over. And we call that, we're going to use the letter R to represent remainder. Let's say R2. So each dog gets eight bones and there's two left. The math fact we really ended up using was that 26 can be split into 24 and a 2. And what we really did is the distributive property. We divided 24 by 3, which gives you those 8 bones, but then 2 cannot be evenly divided into 3. That creates a fraction. Let's look at another way we can do this problem. Okay. I could do a more sophisticated array on an area model, but I'm going to use that same idea that each one of my dogs represents a row. So this one will be Scoop, this row of boxes will be Lucy, and this row of boxes will be Sully. And I'm just going to count over, and I'm going to use skip counting as my tool here. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. Okay, 27 makes me want to go over, but I know 27 is going to be too much. So actually, I'm going to stop right here at 24, and I'm going to finish my area model by closing off my rectangle. So what I've done is represented that three dogs each get eight bones. But that only makes 24 squares. And we had 26 bones. So I'm going to represent those 26 bones, those extra two, by drawing two extra boxes. And that's really what a remainder is. It's what's left over. So each dog gets eight bones, and we have two left over. Really, the idea of that remainder is that it's sticking out. It's not evenly divided, so I can't give these two bones to the dogs. It wouldn't be fair. We're going to look at a third, more sophisticated model. And that's on a place value chart. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to model the number 26. 26 means that I have two tens and six ones. And I always draw my ones like a ten frame. So I draw a group of five and then one more. And I'm going to make a squiggly line because I want to separate that because that's my bench almost. I'm going to be calling those numbers in to evenly divide them. And what I need to decide next is how many ways do I need to evenly divide them? So I need three even spaces. 
So I'm going to make a space here, and that's really for Scoop's bones. I'm going to make a space here, and that's really for Lucy's bones. And I'm going to let that bottom space be for Sully's bones. So it took me two lines to divide it into three equal parts. And remember, I'm going to be taking from my bench. That's what division is. I want to take and give out. It's a lot like subtraction. So when I look at my tens, I have two tens. Well, I have three dogs, so I can't evenly divide those two tens. So what I need to do is I need to unbundle them. So I'm going to take this 110, and I'm going to make a trade. And I would like to stack them, but I didn't leave enough room. So I'm going to make, send this guy over here, and I'm going to make 10 dots, because I can trade 110 equals 10 ones. Okay, so I'm using that fact of unbundling. Uh, I got to unbundle one more group of 10, so I'm going to send him over. I'm going to expand my place value chart. Again, this is a model. I don't have to be strict about how I use it. It just has to help me solve the problem. And I'm going to trade out that 10 again for 10 ones. So now I'm just going to take my ones and start to evenly give them out. Okay, I'm going to take three away and give each dog a bone. I'm going to take three more ones, give each dog a bone. I'm going to take three more ones, give each dog a bone. I'm going to take three more ones. And you kind of get the idea that I'm just evenly giving out whatever my bones are that I have on my bench, as I called it. So I've got one more left out of that group of 10. Now I'm going to get into the next group of 10, take two more. Again, being organized is really helping me. And I'm counting in groups three more. And again, I'm at this situation here where now I no longer have three more left. I only have two. So how many dog bones could I give each dog? It looks like each dog gets eight bones and I've got a remainder of two. Again, I could double check my answer. Eight plus eight is 16 plus eight is 24 plus two is 26. So all our mathematical relationships are still in play. So again, our dogs each got eight bones, and communicating my answer with two left over, remainder two. Now, basically what we just did is going to be totally reflected in the division algorithm. I have 26 bones, and I want to know how many times three can go into that 26. And going right back to our place value chart, I'm going to try and see if I can put three into two tens. So I'm really looking to see if three goes into two tens. Well, that was our problem right back here. I had two tens and I couldn't divide them up evenly. So now I need to take three and look at 26. So in my little thought bubble, I'm trying to think what are my factors of three. I know three times eight is 24 and I know three times nine is 27. So I think my fact that I'm gonna use is three times eight is 24. So those two factors make my product. So multiplication and division are always linked. Three times eight is 24. And now I wanna see how many ones I have left. Two tens minus two tens is zero tens. Six ones minus four ones is two ones. And again, I think, can my three now go into my two ones? Well, no, this is, our remainder that's sticking out in all these problems. So when I write my answer, it's eight remainder two. Many different ways to solve the same problem. Figure out one or two of them, get good of them, get good at them, and use the division algorithm to speed up the process. Have a great day, fourth graders.